Hi, I'm Mike Scott, volunteer at the O Low Light. Today I'm talking about John Duncan, artist, naturalist and taxidermist. My interest in John Duncan began as a child when I saw two paintings by him hanging in my grandmother's home. The paintings of an osprey and a peregrine falcon prompted me later on in life to seek out more examples and to find out more about the artist and his connection with my family. It turned out that John Duncan was my great-great-uncle, born in 1840 at St Andrew's Court, Newcastle upon Tyne. He was the son of Robert Duncan, a famous Newcastle taxidermist and colleague of Hancock, and consequently he was reared in an ornithological atmosphere. Naturally, from his childhood, he took a great interest in bird life. At the age of 14, he was apprenticed to Mr William Wales, an ecclesiastical glass painter of repute, of the firm Messrs Wales and Strang, Newcastle, with whom he worked for nearly 40 years. During the early portion of that time, he studied under Mr William Bell Scott, the artist, and became skilled in the art of painting on glass. I found a drawing of John's of a church window in the archives of Natural History Society of Northumbria, made when he was 15 years of age, showing that he was a talented draftsman. Many church windows, both in the UK and America, are monuments to his undoubted talents in this direction. But the effects of his environments of his childhood were not lost, and practically the whole of his spare time was devoted to the study of birds. He accompanied his father on ornithological excursions, and so acquired that knowledge which he was able to give to the public in such an accomplished manner through the medium of the Weekly Chronicle. For no less than ten years, 1888 to 1898, John contributed week by week a series of pen and ink sketches of birds of the British Isles, and these were widely admired, not only for the valuable information as to the different birds, but more especially for the beautiful and artistic pictures of every species which came from his pen. While a youth in his teens, he made many drawings of birds in oil and watercolours, and later made his mark as a lithographic artist and cartoonist. For many years he gave valuable assistance to the authorities of the Hancock Museum, Newcastle, and the bird collections in the museum were indebted to him for many specimens. The pen and ink sketches contributed by John to the Newcastle Weekly Chronicle were published in book form under the title Birds of the British Isles. In an introduction to the book, Mr Charles Dixon, a well-known naturalist of the time, said, appeals, It appeals to us like Buicks, solely through the merits of its remarkably accurate and lifelike drawings of British birds. John lived in the North East all his life, residing at various residences in Newcastle, Whitley Bay and North Shields. It was during his time at Churton Green, North Shields, in 1910, that he produced a painting of a magpie for a client in the USA. His popularity in America may have been due to Messrs Wales and Strang's commissions for stained and painted glass windows over there. This painting, together with others, is now in my collection. In 1952, John's early sketchbooks and some of his small paintings were donated to the Natural History Society of Northumberland, Durham and Newcastle-upon-Tyne, better known now as the Natural History Society of Northumbria, located at Great North Museum, Hancock. The collection under John's name is mainly of birds, but there is that one pencil sketch for a church window done when he was only 15. It would be interesting to know if it was of an existing window or a design for a new one. John died aged 71 at his daughter's home in Cramlington on the 16th of September 1911 and is buried at Cramlington. His son Thomas 
carried on the family tradition of glass painting.